to my channel. We're going to be doing an experimental brew today. Oh yeah. So I have played with the tomato wine in the past, but being strange uh, that I am, I used concentrates, as in tomato puree that you'd buy from a, you know, squeezy tube or a can. And it was a mixed success. Um, it came, it did ferment, I mean it worked, but it was, it tasted like a Bloody Mary without, you know, any additives. And that's not what I was after. I wanted um, to try one of these tomato wines that come out like a Chardonnay. So I'm trying this recipe again in experimental form so you can watch and see how it turns out. So for this recipe, I suppose, I've got two and a half kilos of these tomatoes. Now these are the cheapest, crappiest tomatoes I could find, uh, mainly because I want it to impart a flavour but I don't want it to be overpowering. That's why I'm not using baby plum tomatoes or, you know, vine tomatoes. Good tomatoes. These are cheap Dutch tomatoes. They come from Lidl. I mean, they're just, you know, a family pack of tomatoes. They were, you know, 59p each, you know, 60p each. And I've eaten some of them because, you know, they're not that bad. So, you know, 120 uh, for this, and then we'll call it 30p for that. So £1.50 in fruit, because tomato is a fruit. Then we're going to be using pectolase, because, you know, we're why not? It's an experiment. Let's go all out. Because it is a fruit and it does contain pectin. Small amounts, but still, we want a clear wine. And I'll be using yeast nutrient, mainly because it's going to speed up the fermentation process. And I know that this wine, in general, takes a long time to age to, you know, taste nice. So, that's pretty cool. Now, for the tannins, I'll be using the trusty old Thai Foo, Foo tea bags. Now, if you're a proper home brewer, you'll be looking at this going, why is he using tea bags? Because using wine tannin, you know, the stuff you buy in a pot, it's three pound. This was a pound and it makes tons. And the flavor doesn't come through, so. You'll get the tanniny taste, but you won't get anything else. So I'm gonna be using four tea bags, because I think that this is going to need a bit of aging and the extra tanning will hopefully bring out its flavours, so, oh, no, I don't want to do that yet, wrong one! So what I'm going to do is put these to one side, get a glass or something. So step one in our process is to process these tomatoes, and they are a little ripe, some of them, a little, little bit mouldy, so maybe I won't use that one. There are some, with, there are a few which are a bit not quite as bad. I don't want mould on it, even though we're going to be hot extracting the flavours and the juices. So, so you can see, I've got my jug here, I've got a spoon, and I've got a knife. So, he's dangerous, he has a knife. So we're just going to cut the tomato like so, and we're going to scoop out the seedy bits. Just like so. I mean, it's not... nothing too clean, but we just want the outside of the fruit. Right, so here are all the tomatoes that have been dehusked and the worst of the, uh, the seeds have been taken out and there's a hole of the gloopy tomato seeds because we want the skins and, you know, the, this bit, not the seedy bits because, yeah. we don't. So what we're going to do is I'm going to tidy up the mass of seeds everywhere and get a pot and boil some water. We now have a relatively clear area and the trusty boiling pan. So I'm not going to chop these up, I'm just going to go in whole. That's the great thing about the hot water extraction. This is going to be filtered so any excess seeds and the pulp is not going to go into our brew. We just want the tomato -y goodness. Should be a bit of fun. I wanted to do a tomato wine for a while, you know, after my last one. And this is now mostly filled with tomatoes. I have my 1.6 litres of boiled water in here, so just pour she in. 
Again, you don't have to add in boiling water, you can use cold, but the boiling water speeds up the process of bringing it to the boil. And it's been 25 minutes that this has been on, so it was on a rolling boil for 5 minutes, just to make sure it was up to temperature, and then I dialed it back to find enough a medium simmer, or a heavy simmer, depending on what you want to call it. Put you there. Everything is swelteringly, boilingly hot. I went ahead and took the four tea bags, boiled a little water in a little cup, and added in the tea bags and just enough water. It is actually getting to the strength now where it's staining a stainless steel spoon. So I'm going to leave this to go completely cold, since, from what I understand of tomato wines, they've got to age for a long time, so the extra tannin will help imbue it with the essence of goodness. It's a shot in the dark, so. So now we've got to let this cool down uh, because it's not advisable to filter boiling hot liquids. Y you end up burning yourself and I've got enough burns already. So I'll be back in about, hmm, I don't know, three or four hours. You know, sat down, had a vape, had another coffee. I love coffee. Um, played some Red Alert. Good stuff. So the stuff is cooled down. It's still pretty warm, but it's, you know, I can hold it without burning myself which is always good. So usually I use my brewing t-shirt. It's, yeah, it's what I use. So um, that's being cleaned currently. So I've got these. This is, funny enough, these are cheap nylon tights. Just little slip-on things. And you get them in cheap places like Poundland and stuff. Boil them first, and you can use these as a type of muslin cloth. It's super fine though you can't squeeze it as much as you would using the brewing t-shirt. So it's technically, you know, and you can stretch them pretty wide on stuff. So uh, I'm going to strain this off and we get to have a look. Yummy! So it's all disintegrated into chunky chunks, which is lovely. And we kept the concentrate rather low, so we can add it. So hopefully it'll be a nice color. So we'll start with that and we'll see where we're at. Look underneath. Yeah, let's get there. Mmm. And, you know, once you're finished, you get boiled tomato. Still, not bad. And this is just so that when we put it in, the demijohn it's not going to puke everywhere. We don't like it when it does that. You have to clean up. As with all, all homebrews, we hope it's going to turn out great. We don't always know. Which is what I'm going to have to do, or I can just hold it. Sounds like you're taking a pee in one of those uh, really, really nasty public urinals. Get the noise out. Oh yeah, that's a good noise. So while this is slowly draining away, get yourself your demijohn and sterilize it. I've already, this has been sterilizing since uh, started, but there's the video at the top, which is a little dated. I will update that, but it's still a good video. And it's sterilized. Yay. So I'm going to leave this to the last minute. And what we're going to do is we've got here roughly 800 grams of sugar, so this should come out around 9 or 10 percent, hopefully. This is what I'm hoping. So I'm going to heat this up, this little bit, on the thing and dump the sugar in. It's not to, you know, sterilize it. What it's to do is to melt the sugar, which, sh which saves shaking it up. So dump that in. Go wow, I've put a lot of uh, there was a lot of liquid in here, and a whole bag of sugar, which was 45p, and I've used it for a couple of little things, so it works out really cheap. So after a bit of playing around, making tomato sock snake. Um, taken my demijohn and I've sterilized it. Now comes the fun bit. 
Now we get to pour in all of our goodness. Now, because I was fiddling around and it's not the brewing t-shirt, this isn't as clear as the last one, but I'll throw it in. It is cool, at least that's good. And you get to see what it looks like in mass. So you can see the color. It's sort of a yellowy, orangey red. And it's, um, you know, it's quite a nice mild color because I don't want to go overboard and make something too tomatoey like my last attempt. Which was good if you like Bloody Marys, but I um, was trying to go for a wine. So we've got this one, which is rather full. So let's see how much of this I can throw in and not throw on myself. And this has got the tea added in and the sugar. So there we go. It is a bit warmer, funny that, but we've added in colder stuff first. And this. So apart from the bit I've spilt, that is most of the gallon already in. So I'm going to top it up with cold water and we get to see what it is. Now apart from all the tomato goop I've got on the side, uh, I've trodden on, it happens, and what little's left in here, this is what you end up with when you add in the teas and stuff. It is a mild red colour, so it's the colour I'm after. Because I've seen that uh, other tomato wines that you buy professionally uh, are quite a mild colour, so I'm hoping that the mild tomato comes through better than the over-the-top tomatoes that you could use. Right, so. Moment of truth. What alcohol percentage is it? There we go, it is 10%. Let's give it a try. Sugary tomato. Who knew? So, now we're going to add in our lovely additives. We've got our yeast nutrient. I'm going to add in a teaspoon of that. Just like so. In it goes. Don't really have to worry. I'm going to shake it in a minute. And I'm going to add in pectolase enzyme. And again, I'm just going to use one teaspoon. Now, again, you don't have to put pectolase in because the cloudiness will not really change much in the flavor profile. It's just, you know, visual. So that is the two main things that go in. And I'm going to give it a shake just to make sure these are all worked up. Plus it adds air into, uh, into your brew which is vital for the yeast to start off with. It doesn't need it once it gets established, but just in the start. So pull out the trusty universal wine yeast. And I'm just going to stick in a light smattering of it. Because like I said, yeast propagates, so this one has already done a five gallon batch, and I've still got like nine tenths of it left. We just pull a bit of sellotape off, and eat a bit. So what I've got here is tomato wine, the percentage and when it was put on. So it is July. And there we go. So the lid is on and then I just back it off a little bit. So it's just slightly. So it's on the biting point. And what this is going to do, we're hoping, it's going to ferment nicely. It would be nice. And not too much rubbish in it. And then in uh, couple of weeks you can come back and hopefully add some thinnings and findings in, bottle it up and then age it because uh, aging this would probably be a good thing. So thanks for watching my experimental brew guys. Uh, thumbs up if you like it, thumbs down if you don't like it. You know, either way, comment, get everything going and we'll see how this turns out and if, uh, if it turns out a good one we'll put this in the thumbs up recipe box. So cheers! So that's the video over. But don't worry, if you look up above and to your left, you'll see some previous videos that I've done. If you like the video, please give a thumbs up. Uh, the subscribe button is down below. If you don't like it, give us a thumbs down. You know, get the community going. Leave a comment in the section below. It really gives me some motivation and it's really good to uh, get some feedback from you. So I hope you enjoyed the video and good luck in your brewing endeavors. Cheers.